Welcome to Lance's Garage. Today we're going to do a lowering spring kit on a 2022 Mark 8 GTI. Just pulled the wheel off. I uh, was worried this car had the DCC. It doesn't. If it did, there'd be a solenoid right here. Um, but it doesn't, so this will go a little easier. Um, so we're going to start with uh, disconnecting the sway bar link. I've got both sides jacked up on uh, on jacks. Um, you need to have one of these tools where it makes it easier. This is to put back here and release the, the uh, pinch joint on the uh, on the bottom of the shock. So we've got to remove this bolt, this bolt, um, and I think we're going to have to remove the inside axle bolts there there's a way to do this with wood i've done it both ways um, with the stock shocks on stock springs i think it's better to remove the axle out so that you don't put any, any undue tension on it um and i think that's pretty much it and of course the three bolts at the top but uh that's what we're going to be doing so let's get started the top bolt here is just a um, on the sway bar length is just an 18 millimeter, so we're just going to remove that. This is why you want both sides up after you remove it. It just comes right off, and then we can just move it off to the side here. And the next bolt, we're going to need this, but there is a triple square bolt in the back, so we're going to need to secure it with a triple square and then uh, impact the rest off. That is a size 14 triple square and another 18 millimeter bolt on the bottom. And I'm not going to impact it off. Going to at least yet. Okay, so I impacted the bolt off. Um, this is the uh, triple square side you can see. Other side was just an 18 millimeter. That's why you need these triple square ends to do this job. If you got a Volkswagen, just go ahead and buy yourself a set because you're going to use them. Um, now we are going to uh, take this tool right here and we're going to put it into a ratchet. And we're going to come to the back of this pinch weld here and we're going to just wedge it there's like a thing like a gap and you put it in here and you turn it and then you just take it off while it's extended and now that is and you can kind of see that it'll move a little bit now okay we are going to go ahead and take out the bolts for the uh, ball joint 16 millimeter. I loosened them with a breaking needle. And you can start to see the gap here. A little bit that's starting to go, but we're probably got to get a pin and pull those axle bolts out. So I'm gonna mess with them here a little bit to see if I definitely need to do that, but then fell back to that. Okay, so it's a 10 millimeter triple square. I got two uh, long 3 8 inch adapters and then this uh, screwdriver keeps the whole assembly from moving
Take some time and wiggle in this thing, and it'll the knuckle will start to slide off of this uh, the pocket that it's sitting in. It's just at the factory. They do them real. They're really tight at the factory. It does best to wiggle them back and forth like this. Okay, so recommend having something that you can put underneath it here so that you can stabilize it. Probably need an extra set of hands and get the at least the front point of the ball joint back on to uh, stabilize the steering knuckle assembly. So now we're going to move to the removal of the shock itself. So this, you just kind of lift this off over top. This is actually lapped over that and then those are the three bolts in there that actually are all that hold the shock in. I'm trying to find out if there's another. In the Mark 7s, there's like some clips that hold this down, but I'm not seeing them with the 8. So I'm trying to figure out how this assembly is held in here. Okay, from the Mark 7s, there were clips. The Mark 8s, this is what's holding down this whole flap here on the front. There's some stuff holding on the back, but we don't need that because all we got to do is get to these three bolts that are right here here and here and if, as we unscrew those the whole shock will drop out change of plans we're going to just go ahead and put the do it one side at a time uh, you need to get yourself a spring compressor either run them or this is uh, the uh, old harbor freight me41 maddox uh, spring compressors. Uh, you need these to compress the spring so that you can pull the cap off and install the new spring on. Um, so we got the spring compressors on the spring here. This thing is actually rotating a little bit more although I'm going to take and add just a little bit more pressure and then we're going to take and uh, pop that off with a uh, the impact gun here. I believe it's a 21 but I'm going to check that. So it's spun a little, so when that happens, it helps to have some of these uh, basically offset box end wrenches. And you use seven millimeter uh, Allen key to go in the top here to keep the center shaft from spinning. Sometimes they come right off, sometimes they don't. Just depends on the vehicle. So this is the uh, Volkswagen uh, Sportline spring. Can see it's a uh, hair smaller my guess is it makes it so the drop is in the spring rate probably more of a progressive spring and my guess is the stock is more linear um, so we're just putting the uh, first shot back together here and we'll see how it goes okay so got the new spring on uh, you can actually didn't even have to put the spring compressor on to get the uh, new springs on they drop an inch um, got it sitting down in the steering knuckle now and we're just gonna basically these things will only go on one way the bolts so just gonna go put those three bolts in and uh, secure it and then we'll start putting this side back together okay for the last step to put it back together uh, we just put in the the uh, uh, sway bar link got the pin here although I might have to take that sway bar link back out you also need an extra jack because the uh, when this thing is down it lets too much tension off of that and you can't get the uh, bolts back into the uh, axle shaft here so there's six bolts around there those are the triple square um, 14s so basically we just got to screw all six of those back in uh, to where they go 
So for the driver's side, I had to go with the sketchy wood method because the, it doesn't have the bolts on the Mark H, which I thought it did, but it doesn't. So we had to get it out like this, unfortunately. So now I'm just gonna cut this tire up and then do some more work on it. So got the driver's side back in uh, with the wood method, very sketchy. Um, but there's no other way to do it, I think, other than removing that bolt, which is a single use. I didn't want to do that, so the wood works. It's just a little, it is definitely, you got to watch yourself, make sure the wood doesn't break. I used, luckily, had a piece of oak, one by three. Um, I wouldn't use a, I've seen two by fours cracking videos, so don't do that. Hello, everybody, welcome back. Um, had a slight delay yesterday, um, had to jump around, uh, rush some stuff because we had a storm front roll through about 5 p.m. yesterday and it's uh, 3 o'clock the next day and you can see it's still wet here so, um, but it is uh, past now so we're going to go ahead and continue uh, the installation. First thing I'm going to do is uh, go and do the rears, um, the fronts. Springs are on. I still have an issue I gotta correct up there, but we'll do get to that last. Uh, we're gonna do the rears, which will go much quicker than the fronts. Um, should be three bolts on each side. Okay, we're gonna start with the passenger side first. And the, it's got two, there's, unfortunately Volkswagen's put this plastic bracing on all the control arms so there's tons of plastic under these things now um this is not on the mark sevens um so basically what we're going to do is remove this plastic because the front of these bolts is all blocked by this front plastic you can kind of see right here it's like a i don't know if they did it for aerodynamic purposes or just to make servicing stuff yourself a pain, but is what it is. So let's just see if we remove these two. Let's see if they get any more weird stuff here. I think see if it catches water. This is just a... That feels like there may be, yeah, yeah, a couple plastic clips up here so let me see how these things work oh this was totally unnecessary for the engineers to do right down here there's like a plastic rivet clip right here and another one right there at the back of the spring here and here so we gotta remove those and those and those two 10 millimeter bolts are what are holding on this. Only thing I can think of is some sort of aerodynamic junk, but it's there, so gotta deal with it. Okay, these are just the plastic rivets, so you just gotta pop one, pop them up with a screwdriver, and then the little rivet, and then you know just the type that they put on the trim. And once you pop off those two, then the plate just comes right off so this is what this thing looks like that's the front facing air i mean aerodynamics is the only reason i can think of why they put this in okay so now that the black plastic is removed we can access these two bolts shock bolt uh the lower part of basically the rear knuckle bolt and the sway bar connector link. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to do is, um, as, a as a precautionary thing, is I'm going to use this bottle jack here and just put this up in to put so that I at least get just a hair's bit of a of tension on here just so that two reasons one when i take these three bolts out it's going to want to drop this this spring is under tension so it's going to want to drop this out and secondly this will allow me to do a uh so this will allow me to do a uh, controlled drop on it 
um, and then also this will allow me to uh, move it back up into place when I'm done so that I'll be able to align the holes here um, and push this whole thing back up with the new spring in place so that we can uh, get it all back together. So let's uh, go ahead and start removing the bolts. It looks like I'm guessing a 13 and probably uh, two 18s. So I'll need an eight. And these aren't uh, Torx bit or the triple squares like the front uh, pinch bolt is. There's just um, uh, regular nuts and bolts. So I'll need to go get, I believe, an 18 millimeter uh, box in wrench and then an 18 millimeter um, impact. And we'll just take these right out. All right, 13 impact. We're just gonna put that on. Oh, way easier. Now, usually these things are also under some sort of weird ass tension here. So let's see if we need to screw this thing out of here. And take off the shock next is an 18. All right, and that's why you keep it under pressure. Or why well, this, it's a good idea to have this there. So now the only thing in here is the shock. So I keep these in order so you know which one went where. Alrighty. So now we are going to Okay, let's see. Now it's down out of here and we can just pull that out and see that's just that's all how the shock is held in there just those three bolts holds that up so now let's pull that shock out of there you just lift it up out of the pocket and let's go compare it to what we're replacing it with so just be aware there is a pad right here comes out of the top pocket like that so that's going to need to get back onto your shock, like so, and when you put it back in there. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot of noise. And then down here in this pocket, there's like a thing where the lower shock sits on, so you just got to make sure you get that on. So here's the, uh, these are the Volkswagen Racing Line shocks. Uh, and we're just going to compare them real quick to the stocks. They drop about an inch, is what they're rated for so just a comparison here of the, let's bring it out into the light so you can see the difference here some of it's in the spring rate right, because it's not just quite an inch there but 25 millimeter drop which is 25.4 millimeters in an inch so it's about roughly an inch drop and uh, again we're just gonna Put that in there with this pad up on top. Uh, isolate it there in the perch on the bottom and just uh, push it back up with the jack, line all the holes, put the bolts in, and then that'll be done with that side. So this is a really easy job for the rears. Uh, this is again for the passenger side. Driver side has one extra step with the uh, uh, level adjuster or the level reader sensor for the lights.
Alright, so that's pretty much the install on this side. We just gotta torque these down. I will uh, get the torque specs here real quick and then uh, you'll see them up here on the screen. Okay, so I found the torque specs. The sway bar connector is 20 newton meters and the um, plus an additional 180 degree turn and the um, uh, shock and uh, So I'm going to declare this side Dunsky. Luckily I thought about this. This side has the sensor right there. This guy, level six. So Volkswagen has put T25 both here and here. So it doesn't matter which one you do. So I'm just going to take these off down here. I don't know how many different ways you got to... How many different fasteners a Volkswagen has to put on a vehicle. But we'll just take these guys out here. Alrighty, so that frees that sensor up. So now we don't have to worry just about hitting this guy. Really? there okay and now we're gonna start removing these bolts and I don't need to show that because it's basically the same as the other side now okay done that's not what's gonna look like um, I need to get them to, I need to undo the parking brake and let it settle but I'm gonna go back up to the front here and fix the issue that I had up there yesterday so basically I'm just coming in here and I'm just chasing out this one thread and uh, the uh, so the end of it here got a little bit messed up. So I went out to the and bought two new ones at the store today. So I'm just undoing that so that I can put these back in. And then I'm gonna torque those back to spec. Okay, I got the last of those triple squared bolts in. This thing is done. I'm gonna put the wheel back on here. Then I'm going to torque all the wheels to spec, the wheel lugs, and then we're going to take it out for a quick spin and let the brake settle. My slow stance. Looks good. And that'll be all for this episode of uh, Lance's Garage. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. We've got some other videos with a uh, ECS tuning uh, exhaust install that was just done on this car uh, a couple days ago. Link is right here. And uh, again, I'll be working on a, a 78 Trans Am or a Firebird LS swap here in the near future. The motor's getting built now. Uh, just the short block had to getting it punched out to a 408 um, there's a video on the ls teardown uh, here and uh, thank you for tuning in and please like and subscribe if you, you enjoyed this thank you